welcome to March. February is finally over, which is awesome. I always say it has the shortest amount of days because it sucks the most. Did you know more people kill themselves in the month of February than any other month, which is why, thank goodness, it's the shortest month, but then also why I felt it was super important in March to have this reading center around our happiness, okay? So there are a lot of reasons why people watch these videos, but at the very core of it, I think that people are watching because they want some good news, right? They want something to look forward to. In the uh, words of Omar Suleiman, a very wise guy, he says that the keys to happiness are three things. Something to love, something to do, and something to look forward to. So hopefully, I'm gonna give you all of those in this reading. So, um, even if your life is already full of joy and happiness and bliss, if you're just wanting to hear some validation about these good vibes that you're already feeling, that you know, to hear you're already on the right path, that you're making the right choices, the right decisions for that sense of security, security does bring happiness, right? Knowing what to expect. At the end of the day, happiness is what we're all seeking. It's the reason why we seek out help, why we would use a tarot reader, why we would look up our horoscope. This is why we're doing this, okay? We are fiends for happiness. It's the ultimate drug and so this is what we're focusing on in uh, March so this will be for your Sun moon or rising sign uh, a lot of times because of our moon sign correlates to our emotions and how we feel which is a lot of times why we make the decisions we make that might resonate a little bit better for you so um, it might be advisable to watch your moon sign as well as your Sun sign and then you could do your rising sign as well too if you'd like to um, what did I want to say okay so since we're focusing on happiness for March and how to kind of sustain that throughout the year this is how we're gonna look at it we're gonna do um, where are you at right now what is tainting any feelings of happiness that you otherwise should have right now what will make you feel happy or at least what you think will um, how is that perception true how is that perception false um, what will actually make you the most happy this month and then we're gonna look at the forces that are kind of outside of your control right, that is affecting this state, and um, which ones that are not really within your power are kind of accelerating your happiness, and then which ones are decelerating that. Um, we're going to look at what's going to bring you luck this month, your crystal of the month, your color energy, your lucky days, and then also any energies that you need to kind of bring into your life in order to help the happiness thrive, how to sustain the happiness once you get some, and then just kind of like a recap or overall nutshell of what March will look like for your sign. So um, kind of thinking about, you know, okay, well, is this reading going to be enough because it's for each specific zodiac sign, each sign has their own. Then I was thinking, um, those of you who have followed me for a long time might remember stop, drop, roll readings, uh, where it's something that you stop doing, something you drop from your life, and something you should roll with. I think I'm going to do a special on those, but um, really kind of amped up or accelerated in order to um, really harness in on that happiness sort of life coaching aspect. And the reason why I think this is important in March is because number one, it's the perfect time for spring cleaning, right? Uh, number two, the popularity of Marie Kondo right now and, you know, sort of thinking about let's get rid of the things that don't bring me joy. Let's just focus on the things that bring me joy and, you know, we all are always looking for joy. We're either trying to increase pleasure or decrease pain. And so that's kind of the purpose of this reading. And then here's the other thing. We're about to step into this Mercury retrograde. We're in the pre-shadow period right now as I record this. And so then when it hits us, um, in order to use this time in its fullest potential, we want to very much evaluate, okay, this isn't working for me. I wanna pitch this and I wanna do something that's gonna make my life better. It's gonna make me happier. It's gonna make me more joyful, more satisfied with life. And so um, I think I'm going to offer that like in sort of a goals and coaching, very intensive sort of way as a special. Um, once I decide to do that, if you're on the email list, um, I only send one email a month, so don't let that be a reason why you're not on my list. Um, then 
you'll be notified of that. And if there's like a coupon code or something that would be in there, uh, if you're not on the list, you should be because I give away, like I said, it's only one email a month, but I, every single month I give away a free 20 minute, um, video reading to uh, a random person selected from my list. So that being said, um, I'm sorry if this long intro did not bring you joy, if it decreased your happiness, but now you know what to expect in your reading. So let's get started. Hi Libra, welcome to March. So where are you at right now? Whoa. Okay, so there's all of this energy about um, new opportunities that you could be excited about right now. And then that might confuse you because we're in a Mercury retrograde when we're kind of like reflecting on the past stuff and like, oh, you're not supposed to start new things. Um, so they're basically like, it's okay to start thinking about that and getting excited for things, new opportunities, things that um, really kind of move you or enthuse you, but just don't share your plans with anyone right now. Um, because any sort of epiphanies or insights as to what's going to make you happy in the long term, what your personal happily ever after looks like, are coming through right now for a reason. And that will kind of coordinate with this Mercury retrograde energy to like kind of show you, okay, I got to get rid of this from my life. I've got to throw this out. I've got to change this and kind of propel you along your path. So that's fantastic because with all of this happiness and enthusiasm type of energy, even though you're keeping it inside, it's only going to potentially for you. So off to a really great start with March. Now, what is tainting any feelings of happiness or joy right now? And they're saying um, the fact that like there are certain things in your life that used to bring you a lot of joy or maybe they're like still, you know, pretty good situations or pretty good friendships and things like that. However, they're not exactly what you want. And so you're thinking about I've got to move on from this just to improve it, to, you know, to find something a little bit better, a little bit more aligned with where I want to be. However, they're saying that um, this is like kind of a slow process, and that's exactly what the Mercury retrograde is for. Um, so it's definitely applicable to you, even though your energy might be a little less um, tragically emotional than some of the other signs this month. So what is it that you think is going to make you happy? And they're saying, honestly, like hanging out with people, and just like happiness itself. Like there's no specific thing. You know that happiness is completely within grasp and um, within your reach. There's no specific item except for maybe the social piece, like, um, you know, being around people who bring you joy and happiness and contentment, making sure that you're spending time with them, maybe meeting new people, maybe going out and drinking. Um, but what they're saying here is as far as a number message goes, you have two, two, two. Um, so they're saying a very Libra thing that, um, you know, the more kind of ducks we have in a row, like these little items of balance, the greater um, total life balance we have, you know, between work and relationships and family. And Libras are all about balance. And so they say that... Um, you know, each individual area of your life, as you look at that with your health, with your relationships, with um, your, your work, your time, your sleep, the more that the, your nutrition, the more that you kind of like balance out these little things, the greater overall sense of balance you have, which really, really brings you a lot of joy and happiness or contentment. So, um, you know, as far as I know that I can be happy despite my circumstances, energy goes. How is that perception sort of true? And they say, well, you could use a little bit more money, a little bit more career success potentially. Um, and also like uh, something to the effect of, you know, in – so kind of putting out limits or boundaries saying, I'm not excited to do this, so I'm not going to do this, um, is actually the right attitude to have. Um, if something doesn't bring you joy, don't do it, you know, basically. I mean, to a certain extent, like within balance, right? They're saying you've got like a really strong and firm, very tactful sort of um, energy of like grace 
and, you know, gratitude and understanding what happiness means for yourself this month. So that's awesome because a lot of signs don't have that. So yay for you. How is your perception false? And they say, well, unfortunately, there are some things that you need to um, have conversations with people about. This could be like a conversation in the workplace or in a relationship, some um, hard truths that you need to share, and you're not super pumped to do that. Um, and if you think you can just brush those under the rug, that's false. But they're saying, you know, you can do this in a way, um, kind of remembering that it's for your highest good and your greater overall happiness. And then now the message, the number message is 444. And they're saying, look, that doubles, that doubles the potential for happiness and success. And it's a very divine energy when you break it down. Um, things as you kind of go through and you're like really objectively honest with yourself and with other people, you're basically, creating um, double the amount of satisfaction and balance and harmony in your life in all areas. And then all of a sudden, it's like the law of attraction starts kicking in. And you might not even be trying to consciously attract anything, but good things flow to you. Increased, um, like more and more joy and happiness flow because you're already savoring that energy and you know it's available to you. And so it's just like you're a magnet for it. So awesome. I love that. Um, what will make you the most happy this month? And they say, you know, not showing, um, not going out of your way to show a specific amount of love to somebody, um, not doing things for other people, just kind of like savoring the happy moments, like really living in that mindful energy, that day-to-day -day energy of like, this is what makes me happy right now. Um, this brings me a lot of joy. And even things, you know, like paying bills that are not typically joyful, it's like the satisfaction after you did it, it's one thing to cross off your list is so satisfying. So, you know, your daily responsibilities, it might be something, um, things that you already know you have to do and you're not going to forget. You might get a tremendous amount of happiness and satisfaction or joy from writing them all on a piece of paper and crossing them off, even though it's something you routinely do anyway. Got out of bed, check. Put my clothes on, check. Like this is not an abnormal morning for me. Had breakfast, check. Brush my teeth, check. Put on my makeup, check. Like you could uh, feel tons and tons of joy or happiness from something so silly in this month. Like the energy is right for that and the more joy you feel, the more that you get. It's like everything doubles. It potentiates over time. You master this, boom, here's more. You master this, boom, here's more. So awesome for you. I'm a little, I wish I had some Libra in my chart. I have approximately zero Libra in my chart. So a little jealous. Um, forces at play outside of your control in favor of your happiness. And they say nobody's going to be real bitchy with you, but also just your optimistic or positive making the... Um, you know, making lemons out of lemonade kind of attitude. Uh, good. So nothing you really have to do there. Um, forces at play outside of your control against your overall happiness is like obligations, contracts, you know, whether those are social contracts or like actual things that you need to do, and then having to make decisions in regards to those. Because everybody knows Libras do not like to have to make the final choice on things. They're totally cool with narrowing down a few options that they're going to be happy with. You know, out of 10 restaurants, I like these three you pick. <laughs> but, um, you know, there's going to be an expectation that you make some sorts of decisions that will affect you in the long term or um, have to do with your stability. And unfortunately, those are ones that only you can make. So... Uh, what's going to bring you luck this month? So your lucky day this month is the 9th of March. And then um, your power color is sapphire. So you can wear a sapphire stone. You can use this as like a color that you wear. Um, you could write with a sapphire colored pen. Um, use a notebook that's similar to that color to make those little lists I mentioned. Or you can just imagine this color energy kind of shining through your body here. Now, your number energy with this color is 38. So they're saying, you know, three is the number of, div of divinity and investment. So, and it was also the number there with the three of cups, celebration and fun and happiness and joy. So, you know, 
basically the spirit world is supporting you the more that you invest in your own happiness with the eight the sooner because eight is about speed the sooner that awesome things are going to flow into your life so eight nine ten eleven eleven is about getting what you want about your wishes so the more that you invest in your own happiness the sooner um, all these awesome blessings flow to get you the things that you want and so it's saying with the sapphire energy that it's important you um, regenerate your body. So you might want to invest in some sort of an activity like maybe you join a yoga class and then all of a sudden, you know, um, there's discounts available with that and you make new friends at the yoga class and all of a sudden your health gets better and you're getting like all of this intuitive insight, you know, through the meditative transient states that you might experience in a yoga class. Um, or maybe it's you change something with your diet, who knows, but essentially, this color energy, it serves to kind of like purify your body. And when we were talking about that, like, hey, let's call attention to the things that are not quite right. That they're going pretty well, but they could be a little bit better. And um, change those, improve them, or cut them out of our life in order to head down this awesome path of things that we want. This color energy correlates to the throat chakra. So it's going to help us to have that better clarity and insight and also to communicate those things we don't want to to help us make those decisions. It's going to soothe your nerves, calm you down, um, clears blocked pathways like on your way to well-being. So this really um, gets rid of any sort of like emotional imbalance. It, it really kind of propels you down the right path. So with this one, the um, affirmation is heal, purify, and regenerate my body. And you know, you can also do this with like pure heal and regenerate my thoughts. Pure heal, regenerate my relationships. Um, Pure heal, regenerate the way I think about, you know, money to clear out your abundance blocks, anything like that. So this is a really awesome color energy for you. If you have a sapphire stone, I would, um, like a necklace or a bracelet or something, I would wear that a lot this month. But um, as far as stones go, your crystal of the month is brown jasper, okay? Now, I want to show you the difference between brown and yellow jasper. Do you see? Brown, yellow. Very close. But this is the one that it, that you want. So if you go to a local rock store, you'll just want to kind of look at that. Um, if that's where you go to pick one up, if you don't already have one. You can also order one from me. And then with that comes a um, like a video series on how to use crystals and things like that, as well as a printout that says, hey, here's how you care for it. Here's the angels associated to it, the physical um, benefits of using this and blah, blah, blah. Okay. So anyway. Um, the point is that this one helps us to be grounded. It's a protective stone, just like a black or a red one would be. Um, it really gives us that like grounded, earthy energy. It instills feelings of comfort. It inspires harmony. It gets rid of our fear. So that's great when we have to communicate or make decisions. Um, it really unveils our hidden feelings, which is super supportive then for us in the time of a Mercury retrograde when all of a sudden bullshit surfaces that we didn't even know we had stuffed into our sub subconscious. Um, it helps us to be honest with ourselves, with other people. Um, it makes our reflection rapid. And so in a Mercury retrograde, instead of sitting there and kind of sulking in this emotional like Pisces bullshit, you're going to just like boom, 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 barrel through it and just like continue on to that place of joy. So it increases your imagination, which is good in the workplace if you have a creative type of role. And then it takes your ideas that you have and it transforms them into action. And so it seems counterintuitive that we would want to take action steps in the time of a Mercury retrograde. And so what I was saying before is it's not necessarily like don't take action. This will help you if you do decide to take action, even though they say like starting things in a retrograde period um, can sometimes create more issue for you or more roadblocks. But the thing is, is like, let's say you start a business, okay? Any potential roadblocks that show up, you're going to be able to know what the potential issues are a little bit quicker in a retrograde than if you started it after and then down the line that snowballs into a bigger problem. Um, so this will be very supportive with that. Now, as far as, um, you know, taking actions go, it might be mental actions or planning and then you execute things after the retrograde because we also had that energy there of like, it's okay to start thinking about and getting excited about things. However, we maybe don't want to tell other people what we're doing just yet. So this one will um, kind of align all of your chakras, gets those kind of moving the right way. It anchors all of those energies in your body. 
If you put it under your pillow, it helps you to remember your dreams, which can be very interesting um, in a Mercury retrograde kind of period because it's calling deeper attention to those things and then it helps us to barrel through those. So it's really supportive in periods of like stress or anguish, disappointment. If you um, have like a chronic illness, like you have bronchitis you just can't get rid of, you might want to put it on your throat chakra even though it's more of a root chakra kind of a um, correlated stone. It helps you to be more organized, um, which is great, because if you're going to Marie Kondo the shit out of your life right now um, to create space for more joy, it'll kind of facilitate that. And, you know, in a Mercury retrograde, we do want to check out the things that don't work. So awesome. Um, helps with it's it's kind of like. It's kind of like, okay, let's say that you take Adderall, okay, and then you cut it into half, and um, you just took like an extra half a dose. It's like that. It's like a, kind of a stimulant. Like it makes you hyper-focused and be able to complete things very, very quickly. So anyway, it does a bunch of other shit. You can look that up on my website. Um, so coming back to the rest of our reading, what kind of energies do you need to bring into your life in order to help that happiness thrive? And they say, don't be caught up in the details of things. Details are not important so much this month. It's more about broad strokes and then just really savoring and focusing on that happiness on a day-to-day -day level. This made me really happy right now. This made me really happy today. I'm so happy that I'm so happy. How magical for you guys. I am so, like... I've never seen the sun card come so up so often in a reading, I don't think. Like, basically never. So, generally, overall, a very happy and wonderful month. Yay! Okay, so how can you sustain your happiness once you get some? And they go, um, well, so here's the thing. They go, you're lucky that this month, if you really get into that joyful, um, happy vibration, it will potentiate and continue to double, double, double. Like it could be super euphoric for you while a lot of the other signs are going to suffer a bit in this retrograde. But what they say is that you're lucky that for some reason it's like you get a hall pass where if you focus on things that are unfair, they don't potentiate. You know, because what we say is like what we focus on expands, right? For you, when you focus on injustice, that doesn't expand this month. So, I mean, that's cool. That's awesome. Um, what kind of spiritual tools might uh, kind of help you to like, get into this happiness vibe if you're not already there and then sustain it? And they say use your pendulum, actually. And so I, I believe that my pendulum video is uh, – you can look it up in the playlist – but I believe that that one is a public video for everybody. Because some of them were private because they were for Patreon previously. So anyway, um, this is what pendulums look like. And so you can say, you can ask it questions and it will say yes, like this. Or maybe it'll say no, like this. Or maybe it'll say maybe, like this. And so me personally, um, because I would go to the tarot more often if I had a question like, does so-and-so have feelings for me? I could get a yes, but like that is not specific enough because the feelings might be like, I hate you, bitch. <laughs> right? Um, so I don't like to use yes or no um, questions very often with things like that. But I do use my per – personally, I, a way that I use the pendulum a lot is like, okay, should I start with this task today? Yeah. Should I start with this one? No. Should I do these things in this order? Yes or no? You know, that kind of stuff. Like if I have a big long laundry list of shit I want to accomplish, it's like, is this a good place to start? That kind of a thing. Um, and then the last thing here is mo March overall in a nutshell. What's that going to be like? Isn't it going to be funny if we get the sun card again? They go, it's a month of making um, clear-cut decisions and feeling good about them. They go, even when we are looking at things that are unfair or unjust, they're saying, um, remembering that if we focus on, you know, so I feel like this word advocacy is coming up. So if you're going to advocate for somebody else, that might bring you joy, right? Okay, I see that. Um, this specific group of people is being oppressed. 
So therefore, I am going to focus on that, and it's not going to expand the oppression. I'm going to help them in whichever way I can, possi- you know, whichever way I possibly can. That's the judgment decision that you're making, and then your happiness expands because you're doing good for others. That's a way that might play out. March. Um, so I do feel like something's unfair, and I don't necessarily know that it. For some of you, it's unfair to you. Like somebody got promoted ahead of you, and they were totally not as qualified as you. For others of you. Um, you know, it's just general kind of shitty happenstance, but you make the most of it. But then for some of, for more of you, I would, I would feel like this is like 40%. You see something that's unfair, you call attention to it, you make that decision, and then you do it with strength and confidence, and it makes you really happy that you do because awesome outcomes um, move forward with that. You say, and so when they were saying before, like you're not going to go out of your way to show love for something. So let's say that previously... Um, you were promoting the shit out of um, a company that you really liked. Let's say they do, they make, um, they make baby products that are organic, for example, okay? And so you really love those, and so you're sharing it with everybody. You were trying to um, tell other moms how great this is, and then you find out that a lot of those baby products are made in, like, a sweatshop by, like, tiny Chinese children or something, okay? And so then all of a sudden, you go, oh, uh uh-uh, I don't like this anymore. You call attention to it, despite the fact that it might be embarrassing you shared the shit out of it before, but it brings you a lot of joy and happiness that you're raising awareness, that you're advocating for the needs of these tiny children. It You do this with so much grace and tact that it actually has a bigger effect than you anticipated whether you notice it or not like because people might not like the posts that you make on social media or whatever but maybe then they do just stop buying those products for example they're saying this creates um good bonds and connections with other people you know if you join some sort of group where you see an injustice or some sort of an oppression and you decide to advocate for that you create like a stable um like a really wonderful environment where things grow out of that and bonds are created and there's a lot of joy and happiness and success in that and it can also create new opportunities for you down the road um they're saying it might seem a little bit crazy as i talk about this right now because maybe this hasn't come into your awareness as to what this injustice Justice is as of yet. Um, but this will come to you. You'll notice it. You'll hear overhear somebody saying something. Someone will bring it to your attention, or you'll just think about it on a whim, like while you're buying a coffee. You'll be like, oh, I think um, I think I want to look into this certain thing. And you discover something that's unfair, and then you are able to somehow um, like end something that needs to end. And this could be something, you know, much smaller scale. It could be an injustice in your family. It could be, hey, mom, I noticed that you're nicer to me than my sister. You know, something simple. But basically, that's kind of marching in a nutshell. And by doing those things, by making those decisions, um, your happiness just basically potentiates. So you have a lot of things going for you. And it seems to me like March even though typically in a retrograde, we don't want to start new things. Um, In starting something like this, it's a really wonderful thing for you to do because it's almost like, you know, I said you get a hall pass. Like these energies don't touch you that way because you're doing the right thing, because you're making a difference, because you're advocating for someone else or a group of people or something or a certain, um, you know, platform, an issue that's important to you. And then things start really moving and shifting in a positive direction for you, creating huge opportunities down the road. It's like you're laying the foundation for something, um, which isn't uncommon from some of the other signs. It's like they've got maybe they have boring months and less happy months than you, but um, it's like a foundational month for new things later. So anyway, that's your March. I love you so much, and I'll see you in April. getting all the way to the end of it. I really appreciate your support. If you are interested in other videos, click here. If you are interested in subscribing, go ahead and click here. Hit that notification bell so that you get alerted to when new videos come out and also when I do surprise live streams. And then if you're interested in winning a free 20-minute video uh, reading personally every month, go ahead and click right here. Mwah!